Okay. Now that we learn the different definitions and the fundamentals, rules of a signal flow graph, now let us construct a signal flow graph from uh, a given system. So to illustrate the steps that we need to, we can follow, uh, let's take a look at this example. So in this example, we have a circuit. Yeah, the voltage here V1, we have a voltage here V2, and another voltage V3. Then the variables are V1, V2, V3, and also I1 and I2. So there are five variables. We have V1, V2, V3, and then we have I1 and I2. And uh, I put Z1, Z2, Z3, the circuit. This means these are, these are values, these are functions in S domain. So if it's uh, a capacitive, it's a capacitor, then that Z will be just equal to 1 over SC. If it's an inductor, then that's S times C or L. And if it's a pure resistor, then it's just equal to R. So it's a function of S. So in general, I just put it Z1, Z2, Z3. It can be any of this following or combination of the following. So it's an impedance. Now, to draw the signal flow graph, to construct the signal flow graph of this, represent this system, there are steps. The first step is we need to write the equations. Write the system equations. System equations. And they should be in the form of uh, if we have an output x2 equals, let's say, a gain of a11 one one x1 plus a12 x2 plus, and so on. And uh, if there are other, other equations, if it's more than. Uh, one more than two or three, then you write them all. So in this example, we need to construct the equations by using the Kirchhoff's voltage and current loss. And we will be doing that proceeding from left to right of the circuit. So we start at left. So our input here will be V1, and the last variable here will be V3. And that will be our output. So our input is V1, our output is V3. So we start with V1. We need to, to uh, write the system equations now. So what's the uh, voltage here? It, this is V1. So if I want to solve for I1 from nodal analysis, I1 is just equal to the difference between this uh, voltage V1 minus V2, V1 minus V2, and you just divide that with Z1, the higher potential minus the lower potential. So from here to here, you divide it by Z1, and that will be the current flowing, flowing through that Z1. But again, we need to rewrite this into this form. So this will be, rewrite this one, we can write this as I1 equals uh, 1 over Z1 times V1 minus 1 over Z1 times V2. So we can uh, let this our first equation. Next, for uh, the second voltage V2 here, what will be our V2? We can apply KCL at, point, at this point. So the KCL here uh, will be, you have a current entering, you have a current leaving here, and we also have a current leaving towards Z3. And that current is actually what will be this current flowing through Z3. This is just equal to V2 over Z3 by Ohm's law. And if it's not equal to V2 over Z3, then we use KCL. So we have I1. I1 will be equal to both currents leaving here, this current and this current. This current is V2 over Z3. 
It's V2 over Z3. That's I3, but we don't have I3. It says V2 over Z3. And we have another current leaving, which is equal to I2. So plus I2. And again, we need to reconfigure this one. And solving for V2, because V2 will be the next variable here. V2 will be equal to uh, I1 minus I2. So this will be uh, V2 over V3 or Z3 equals I1 minus I2. Then V2 will be equal to Z3 times I1 minus Z3 times I2. And this will be our second equation. So that's V2 here. Then next, so we start with the input, then I1, V is from the input, then we have V2, then next we have I2. So I2, we need to solve for I2 now. So how do you solve for I2? We can again use the same method as we did for I1 here. So I2 will be just equal to this voltage here minus the voltage here. The voltage here is V2 minus the voltage here, which is V3. And you divide it with an impedance Z2. So this will be V2 minus V3 all over the impedance Z2. Z2. Then rearrange this again. I2 will be equal to 1 over Z2 times V2. And it's 1 over Z2 V2. So that's uh, I2. And lastly, for the voltage here, V3, if you want to solve for V3, the voltage here is just equal to the current flowing here is I2, flowing through Z4. So if you solve for V3, we just use Ohm's law, V3 voltage equals uh, impedance times the current. I2 times, or uh, Z4 times I2. So Z4 times I2. Z4 times I2. And we have now our four equations here. So this will be our simultaneous equations. We start with our input. Here, the input. Then we end with the output V3. So now, that's the first step. The second step is to connect the nodes by the, the appropriate gains. So number two, actually number two is to rearrange them into this format. First is to write the system equation, then rearrange them. And uh, the next thing is we can now start drawing. So we start at V1. So our input is V1 here from left to right. So V1 is a signal. So it's an input signal, so it's a node. So this is V1. Then V1, means we can now look at these equations. V1 will be going to another signal, which is related to I1, and it will also go to another signal, which is uh, V2. So we can just write here, Another signal, we have I1, V1, I1, V2, I2, and V3. So we can just write them directly. Then we can connect them later on. V1, I2, then, or I, V2, this is, should be V2. From left to right, it should be V2. Then we have another signal. So V2, the next one is I2. So this will be I2. Then lastly, we have uh, V3. V3. So these are, these are our five variables. Now we will connect them, the branches, and take note of the relationships between the two, between these nodes. So this one, we have a signal, V1. And if I solve for I1, 
it should be equal to this V1. I multiplied it with what? With, if you look at the first equation, if I'm solving for I1, I have two inputs here. We have V1 and another input V2. Remember our the property of a signal flow graph. Uh, when the, the system uh, has two inputs, and if you have two uh, and one output, so just like if you remember this one. So if this is our output, which is that I1, and it has two inputs coming from V1 and coming from V2. So V2 is also going back to I1. But uh, it's not in this direction. You will be drawing it just like this. And it will go back to I1. So if I try to solve for I1, I1 will be equal to V1 times whatever is in this, that the, the transmission or the gain here, then plus V2 times, again, this gain here. It should be a plus. It's all going through. It's like this one. If I write this in this form, so this is I1 and if this is x2, x1, and this is xi, then if I solve for xi, xi, this is i, a1, 2, i1, i1, 2, i, a, i, 1. So this will be just equal to a, i, 2 times x2 plus a, i, 1 times x1. That's xi here, the output. So in this case, our equation is this. So we need to multiply V1 with what? 1 over Z1. So therefore, this will be 1 over Z1. That's the first term here. Then the next one is we need to subtract. This is addition. So what happens if it's uh, we want a, a minus? Then you just need to make the gain negative. So here, instead of 1 over Z, this is Z1, we need to put this one a negative. 1 over z1. So that if I solve for i1, i1 will be equal to v1 times this one, i z1, then v2 times negative 1 over z1. So that will be this equation. Okay? So that's i1. That's how we construct a signal flow graph. Then next, we go to v2. Again, v2 is an odd. Then, if we want to solve for V2, we need, we have an inputs, two inputs, I1 and I2. So, the same as the first case. So, we need to connect I1 going through V2. Then, we need to connect also I2. So, this is our I2. So, we don't go in that direction. We will go in this direction if we want to go back at this point. This node. And what will be the, the values here? For the I1, we need to multiply it with Z3. So this will be Z3. And for I2, we need to multiply it with negative Z3 again. Then we repeat this again for V2. Right? That's for V2. Now for I2, I2. So what are the inputs for I2? We have V2. So this is again our V2 going to that direction. Then we have V3, and it will go to I2 again. Then this, this value should be 1 over Z2, 1 over Z2, and this one will be negative 1 over Z2, negative 1 over Z2. And lastly, if you want to solve for V3, V3 will be equal to I2. This is our I2. That's the input for V3, and it will go to V3. And we need to multiply I2 with z4 so we put here z4 and this is now our signal flow graph and uh, the next step will be optionals if uh, the desired output node has outgoing branches we can add a dummy node and a unity grade gain branch to make this one a uh, better looking signal flow graph to make it symmetrical if I paste it here, I can 
add another branch here to make it symmetrical and another node here. And I will call this one still V3 and this one will be equal to 1. You can do that. This is a negative or positive 1 because this, this is the same thing. V3 and V3. So uh, this, is, this is called a dummy branch. It's just it's called dummy because it's not necessary. It's just used to uh, make the signal flow graph symmetrical or good looking. So okay, that's how how we construct a, a signal flow graph from a circuit here. You can do that for every circuit, uh, every type of circuit you want. Now, now that we know how to construct this from uh, a given system, how about we construct it from a given black diagram? So I, if I have a black diagram, given black diagram, black diagram, if I want to construct the signal flow graph coming from this one, so we need to convert this to signal flow graph. Why do we need to do that? Why do we need to convert a black diagram to a signal flow graph? Because sometimes black diagram, we have black diagrams that are so much complicated that it's hard for us to simplify them and reduce them using our, our rules in black diagrams. So what we do is we just convert them into signal flow graph and later on we apply some signal flow graph theory to solve for the actual or the total gain or total transfer function. And uh, it's a direct direct uh, method for a signal flow graph compared to the black diagram. So how do we convert a black diagram into a signal flow graph? So let us look at uh, this black diagram. This is one of our examples from uh, block diagram topic. Now, I want to draw the equivalent signal flow graph of this one. So how do we do that? And to do that, first, we need to label every point in the black diagram. Can okay, use another color here. So we start with uh, the input. So we can consider the input as one, uh, one point. So here, we can call that point 1. Then for the first summing point, call it point 2. Then we have another point here, another summing point, we can call it point 3. Then this one, then this cascaded here, we can just make it one block. So the next point will be, because there's no, no take up point here, will be this point here, this common point here, we can call it 4, point 4. Then point 4 going through the summing point, the summing point will be point 5, then lastly for the output, we can call it point 6. So those are the first step. Now that we know those points, we can uh, make them as our nodes in our signal flow graph. So we start with uh, the first one here. So we have one. So how many nodes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six nodes. Two, three, four, five, and six. So these are our nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So these are just the label. So it's not part of the signal flow group. So that you can see uh, where I'm starting and ending. So next, so we start at this point. This not here. This is just equal to the input R. So this is just R. Then we have uh, a point here from 1 to 2. So we just draw 
a branch and there's no gain between point 1 and 2. So meaning the, the signal does not change from here to here. So if it does not change, then this will be just equal to 1. And the gain is just equal to 1. Then we have from 2 to 3. Again, there's no gain between them. Then this is also equal to 1. Then we have from 3 to 4. So from 3 to 4, we have a gain. Because we have block between them. We have actually two blocks. And you can simplify that into this one. Block is just G1 times G4. So this is just G1 times G4. Then next, from 4 to 5. So from here to here, there's a gain again. And there's a block between them. And that block is just equal to G2. So this is G2. Then lastly, from 5 to 6, uh, there's no block between 5 and 6. So that the, the transfer function here will be just equal to 1. Then for the feedback and the loops. So we have for H1 here. So it will go back from point 0.4. This is our point 0.4. And it will go back to point 0.3. So, point 0.4 will go back to point 0.3 here. And it will be in that direction. And the gain will be H1. And this is positive, so this will be positive H1. Then we have another here, another path from 4 going to 0.5. So, from 4 to 0.5. And this is again plus, so this will be positive G3. Then lastly, from point uh, 6 or point uh, 6 here, or I forget to put another, this is a take of point, so this is, it should be point 6. We also consider take of point as a point. So this is, this will be 6 and this will be 7 for the output. So 6, then we have another output here, 7. And 6 will go back to 2.2. 2. So this point 0.6 here will go back to point 0.2. Oops. Point 0.6 will go back to point 0.2. And the gain will be this gain here, h to n. If you look at here, this is a negative feedback loop. So this will be negative H2. Then the output, you know, the output, this will be just equal to C. And the gain here is just equal to 1 because it's just a straight line. There's no block between them. And this will be the equivalent signal flow graph of this block diagram. So that's how we convert a block diagram into signal flow graph. And how to solve this? That will be our next topic. Okay.